Hello my dear students and welcome back to Excellence Batch with my excellent students. So I am Diksha Sharma, your zoology teacher and we have started the chapter human reproduction. So in this chapter, in the previous class, we have studied spermatogenesis. So before starting the next topic of this chapter, why not to solve some questions and see how much have you gained. So first of all, the question is, which cells in seminiferous tubules undergoes meiosis 1? So seminiferous tubule is a part of testes and what do they produce? Sperms. So during spermatogenesis, primary spermatocyte is the one which undergoes meiosis 1 to form secondary spermatocyte. And then secondary spermatocyte undergoes meiosis 2 to form spermatid and then spermatid forms sperms. Function of acrosome in a sperm. So sperm, when you have seen the structure of a sperm, it has a cap-like structure known as acrosome on its head and it contains enzymes. It contains enzymes for fertilization because during fertilization sperm has to enter inside the ovum like this. So it has to penetrate its wall and to digest the wall it definitely should have certain digestive enzyme and that's present in acrosome because acrosome is a cluster of Golgi bodies. Function of a sperm from uh, formation of a sperm from spermatid is known as. So formation of a sperm from spermatid is known as spermiogenesis. It is a process under spermatogenesis. So most of the student always, they are always in doubt. Ma'am, then what's the difference between spermatogenesis and spermiogenesis? Spermatogenesis is the entire process right from formation of germ mother cells to the formation of sperm, differentiation of sperm and even the release of a sperm from Sertoli cell. Whereas spermiogenesis is a process where spermatid is getting converted into sperm getting mature and differentiated. This is the difference. So spermiogenesis is a kind of a process under spermatogenesis. Next. LH act on dash cells to release dash. So we are talking about male reproductive system. So LH acts on Leydig cell also known as interstitial cell to release the hormone androgens. Next, Sertoli cells secrete dash that gives negative feedback to FSH. So what does Sertoli cell secrete? They secrete inhibin. And inhibin gives negative feedback to pituitary to, to not to release FSH, right? So if you have score 5 out of 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right, then give yourself good or in fact excellent because the batch name is excellence and we are taking you towards excellence, okay? So let's move further and talk about today's topic that is female reproductive system. So just like male reproductive system, female reproductive system also contains certain very important parts. Now let's see what are those. First, the primary reproductive organ ovaries. Why they are primary? Now you all know that because it produces gametes. It produces gamete and gamete is the essence of life. You know, if there are no gametes, might be we will not or we would not have been formed, right? Now, this is the structure of a female reproductive system. So female have ovaries right here. So these are the ovaries. So ovaries are one pair. How many? One pair. Next we have duct system. So right from here to here are these ducts. So this is entire duct system. Just like in male we have uh, you know wretched testes, vas afferentia, epididymis, vas deferens, ejaculatory duct. So in the female also we have the separate duct system and that is these ducts and it includes fallopian tube, these are fallopian tube, this is uterus, this is cervical canal and this is vagina, okay. Then we have accessory gland, the mammary glands present in breast. Along with that we have external genitalia known as vulva which is the external structure, okay let me write it here which is the external structure, uh, you know, or the structure outside the vagina, all right. So like male have external genital like penis, female have vulva, all right. So we'll be talking about all of them in detail, but today we are going to talk about these two only. In the next class, we'll be talking about these two. Okay, let's get started. 
So first we'll start with a very important organ, ovary. As I've told you, ovary is a primary reproductive organ. Why? Because it is producing gametes. So just like testes, it is also a heterocrine gland. What gland guys? Heterocrine gland. Just do not look at the diagram now. You will get confused. Okay. It's heterocrine because it, all, it have both exocrine and endocrine parts. Endocrine parts will secrete hormones. What hormones female have? You must have heard of estrogen and progesterone and it produces gametes which moves through ducts so that portion is the exocrine portion now the question is how many ovaries we have we have one pair of ovary where it is present it is present in lower abdominal area present in lower abdomen and that area is also known as pelvis Okay, let me tell you what a pelvis is because that might be a very new term for you. So, do not worry. So, for example, this is a female's body. Okay, this is abdomen. These are the legs. Okay, don't laugh at my diagram. <laughs> so, this lower portion just right here is the pelvis. This portion contains urinary bladder, uterus and all these important organs. Okay. So, this abdo lower abdomen region in female where all these organs are present uh, near the hip. Okay. The hip region is there. That area is known as pelvis. Right. So, uh, pelvis is the particular area where all the females urinary bladder, uh, this, uh, you know, uterus, all these organs are present. Okay. So, you can see here in this diagram, these all are present situated along in one uh, particular area. Fine. So, if this area is pelvis, it contains uterus, ovaries and everything. Okay. Now, if you will see the diagram of ovary hair, if you, you can see the diagram of ovary hair, the entire area, this entire area of your ovary is divided into two regions. Okay. There are two zones in this uh, uh, ovary. This region is the medullary region. This region is the medulla and the outermost region, this one, whatever is left this one is the cortex region so we can say that ovary if we will we'll see the inside of the ovary the matrix matrix means this uh, stroma or matrix that means this entire tissue is divided into two regions the outer cortical and inner medulla so we say the stroma of ovary stroma means the entire tissue of the ovary stroma of ovary is divided into two regions the outer is cortex and inner is medulla, inner is medulla. So you can see here this is a red color blood vessel, this is also blue color blood vessel, okay. Red is artery, blue is vein, okay. So you can see in the medullary region you can find nerves and blood vessel. Whereas if you can see this very carefully, in the cortical region you can see these structures known as follicles. And these follicles are present at different stages. The very uh, primitive or we can say immature state is a primary follicle and then tertiary and then graphene follicle. So follicles are very important structure. Inside of this is present a cell that will become egg someday. So the detail of the follicle will be doing during the eugenesis. Okay. So this follicle is nothing but it's a cluster of cells. See, look at this uh, diagram all right it's going to be green but we don't want green so if you can see here how a follicle looks like it has this cell known as oocyte this oocyte is destined to become ovum someday and it is then covered by a number of cells the nurse cells and this is how a very primary follicle looks like primary follicle looks like and then this follicle under the influence of hormone will get keep on maturing and maturing and become the entirely mature follicle okay like primary follicle on maturation will first become secondary follicle they have a lot of differences that will be doing in the oogenesis and then it will become tertiary follicle 
and tertiary will then become graphene follicle which is the entirely most mature form it is the mature follicle okay follicle is nothing just a cluster of cell containing a queen cell inside it and what is that queen cell oocyte which will later on become uh, the ova or egg someday right so uh, the point here to pick up here is that the entire stroma or tissue or the inside space of your ovary is uh, divided into two region outer cortex inner medulla the cortical region contains follicle and medullary region contains yes medullary region contains if i say cortex contains follicles what does medullary regions contain the medulla contains blood vessels and nerves blood vessels and nerves i hope that's pretty clear to everyone yes now if we'll draw the diagram of ovary you will see the outer region is made up of germinal epithelium unlike that of testes in testes the outer region was tunica albuginea if you remember we have done the layers the protective layers in testes we have tunica albuginea outside and germinal epithelium inside of the seminiferous tubule this was how testes was how was testes in testes we had outer uh, tunica vaginalis inside tunica albuginea which has testicular lobules which have seminiferous tubule and inside the seminiferous tubule you had germinal epithelium here was germinal epithelium this was tunica albuginea so if someone asks you in testes tunica albuginea was outer whereas germinal epithelium was inside here it is different here germinal epithelium is outside whereas tunica albuginea whereas tunica albuginea is present little inner okay tunica albuginea is present little near okay or the towards inside all right it's very simple so do not forget this this is how ovary has at the outside germinal epithelium and inside it has tunica albuginea right and this area is cortex inner area is medulla the cortex contains follicles at different stages whereas this one contains blood vessels all right now how is ovary being two small structures are present or hanging in the abdominal or pelvic region imagine these are the ovaries so don't you think so ovary will fall down how they are present in pelvis they are just two balls you you have just kept it like that they will fall down right but does it happen does it move from its place no it does not move from its place because it is surrounded or supported by the fold of skin known as ligaments known as ligaments one ligament is different that you have studied which connect bone to bone this ligament is different it is a fold of skin that connects your ovary with the various organ how if you can see this diagram carefully you can see this is a fold here which is connecting ovary with the uterus apart from that ovary is also connected to the pelvic wall like this right pelvic wall or abdominal wall right so that's why ovary does not move from its surface why because ovary is attached to the pelvic wall and to the uterus via folds of skin known as ligaments very important point to note here guys the ovary okay very important point ovary or ovaries are attached to uterus and pelvic wall with the help of ligaments with the help of ligaments okay the primary function of the ovary is to produce the egg and to produce hormones because without hormones the body cannot function well okay
all right guys moving further to the duct system so in the duct system what do we have in the duct system we have fallopian tubes in the duct system we have uterus in the duct system we have the vagina okay these are the three important things that we have in duct system so we'll start with the fallopian tubes first we'll start with the fallopian tubes first fallopian tubes are also known as ov duct also known as ov duct right so these fallopian tubes or ov duct how are they present if this is a ovary if this is a ovary fallopian tube is present near to the ovary but it is not attached to the ovary it is not attached to the ovary it is present near to the ovary do you understand the difference if i have this hand imagine this hand is a fallopian tube okay and this my fist is ovary so this fallopian tube have three parts or the entire fallopian tube is divided into three part this funnel shape structure this is funnel shape because it is little triangular right this funnel shape structure or here you can say is known as infundibulum which have these finger like structures known as fimbriae okay so this portion of fallopian tube is in fundibulum it has finger like structures known as fimbriae and here it has an opening known as ostia okay let me draw it for more realistic view <laughs> right imagine oh that hurts you can see that right <laughs> so that's your uh, ostia or the opening that's finger like processes and this portion is in fundibulum this wide portion is is this ampulla this wide portion is ampulla this small portion like a shoulder which is connecting my uh, you know arm with the chest region is the isthmus and my chest imagine this is uterus imagine this is uterus this is uterus this is isthmus this widest portion is ampulla this small funnel shaped structure is in fundibulum which has finger like structures and an opening and this is ovary this is ovary and this is how they are present so you can see the ovary is not touching the ovary is not touching the fallopian tube so when the ovary will release the egg the ovary will release the egg these finger like processes will catch the egg and it will enter through ostia inside the fallopian tube you got it no you don't got it imagine this coin is the egg and this is ovary ovary is releasing egg and these are fimbr fimbriae like processes or just move it like that okay so ovary is releasing eggs when it will release the egg the fimbriae will catch the eggs you got it these are fimbriae these are moving like this this is ovary and when the ovary will release the egg fimbriae will catch it and put it inside the fallopian tube very simple fine so this is how it works we say that there are three portions of fallopian tube this portion the funnel shape is in fundibulum which is present near the ovary this is in fundibulum this is your ovary right and in fundibulum is what shape funnel shape and where it is present present near ovary and this one these finger like processes they are known as fimbriae finger like projections okay now after in fundibulum we have this very large area ampulla ampulla is the widest area and it is that particular area where fertilization takes place so it is the site of fertilization so many of you must have uh, solved the previous year questions where in the options you will find ampullary isthmic junction so these questions were from like many years back at that time ncrt used to say the site of fertilization is not ampulla but but ampullary isthmic junction this is isthmus okay so they used to say this is a portion where fertilization takes place but now they say this is a portion where fertilization takes place so you have to follow new trend right that fertilization site is ampulla only forget about that junction 
okay so these are the three parts of a fallopian tube an isthmus is the area that join that join your fallopian tube with the uterus so that's the uterus so what's the role of the fallopian tube the role of fallopian tube is first it is a site of fertilization the fertilization will take place here second it allows the movement of ova or sometimes if fertilization has taken place embryo how it will allow the movement of ova okay let me tell you a story when the fertilization takes place here the egg or okay so we are saying the egg has been released from ovary the egg and sperm meets here after meeting of the egg and sperm the zygote will continue to divide and it will form embryo the embryo will enter into the uterus and it will get implanted here i hope you all know what is implantation because we have done that right in the starting of this chapter so implantation or the baby's growth take place in uterus you got that so implantation or baby's growth take place in uterus so it's quite simple the embryo has to enter inside the uterus so for that we need movement of the embryo and embryo does not have legs embryo does not have legs we want embryo to move from here and enter here because fertilization has taken place at this point so for movement fallopian tube gives the appropriate conditions so fallopian tube have ciliary epithelium fallopian tube have ciliated epithelium what does it means ciliated epithelium that means the epithelium have cilia so if epithelium have cilia it will allow the movement of substances in a specific direction so the ciliated epithelium will allow the movement of embryo or ova all right just like uh, uh, cilia is just like these uh, feather like structures or you can say hair like structures so they will propel your embryo in a specific direction and they will move like that so it's just uh, entirely covered with cilia like this okay another thing fallopian tube have muscles and muscles will contract just like the contraction takes place in your gut in gut the contractions are peristaltic movements the Uh, the uh, movements these peristaltic movements the same kind of movements that take place in fallopian tube also so also along with ciliated epithelium the peristaltic movement of fallopian tube also allows the movement of ova right so along with along with cilia peristalsis okay peristaltic movement of muscles of oviduct allows embryo movement allows embryo movement very simple yes so that's what your fallopian tube does now let's talk about the uh, uterus so let's get started with that So we'll talk about uterus. Uterus is also known as hystera or womb. So womb is a very layman word. You know, a lot of people use in English, right? So hystera womb. It's a very, very, very important organ because this is the one which you know uh, gives a home, house to the developing fetus. Okay. So how does it looks like? This is how a uterus looks like. okay let me just change it a little bit here now as you can see this is like a pear but the pear hold it on the opposite side so we say that your uterus is inverted pear in shape inverted pear the fruit pear okay it is highly muscular it has a lot of muscles highly muscular and vascular organ 
Vascular means it has a lot of blood vessels. It has a lot of blood vessel. So it is rich in muscles and blood vessel. Why? Because muscles will make it more elastic. Because if, if it does not have muscles, it will not be able to do the role of parturition, the delivery of baby. Because muscle need to be contracted at that time to, you know, release the things to the outside, right? Now, if you'll see this uh, organ, as I've told you, this is the place of gestation where the baby lives for nine months. It's the place of gestation. The baby lives for nine months and embryonic development takes place in this particular organ. It is hollow inside. It has space inside. That's why the baby can easily live there. Okay. So, if you'll see the various parts of uterus, this upper dome-shaped part is fundus. This center portion is body, this portion is cervix and cervix is present in the form of a canal. You can say it's a canal. So you also use the word cervical canal. What do you use the word guys? Okay, you use the word cervical. Okay, that's not working on this side. Let me write it here. Cervical canal. This cervical canal have very powerful rubber band muscle, you know, rubber bands made up of muscles. You call it as sphincters. These are sphincters present here. Sphincters are very important. Why? Because they will, you know, they are very powerful sphincter. Uh, you know, at every organ, like even if it is urethra, even if it is anus, we have sphincters here. Sphincters, they close and open any opening or lumen. If they are contracted, they are closing the surface. If they are relaxed, they will open it. Just like a rubber band and a packet of lays, right? For example, you have a packet of chips and the chips, you ate some chips and others are left. Right. Now what your mother used to do? Mother used to take a rubber band and pack it with it so that they will not get, you know, soggy or something. Just like that our sphincters work. So when you are, you know, putting the rubber band on, that means sphincters are contracted. They will close that thing. And if it is open, it is relaxed, then it will open the lumen. Okay. So what are these guys? These are sphincters. These are sphincters. This is internal sphincter. And this is external sphincter. These sphincters are the most powerful muscles and sphincters present in the animals. Okay, why? Because imagine the baby of around 3 kgs present here. The sphincters are so much powerful that even against the gravity, it is holding the baby here and baby cannot move out. Right? So that's why these sphincters are the most powerful. Sphincters cervical sphincters sphincters are the most powerful all right apart from this your cervix has glands it has cervical glands which secrete mucus secrete mucus so mucus consistency depends upon the hormones of female if female have higher estrogen this mucus will be very thin but if female have higher progesterone this mucus will be very thick that's why during pregnancy female have higher level of progesterone throughout the pregnancy so she has form a plug like structure of mucus here known as cervical plug you got my point you know when a female is pregnant she has one hormone which is at a very high content or uh, uh, its name is progesterone right so for example if a female is pregnant today she has higher level of progesterone not estrogen okay so when progesterone is at higher amount it will make the mucus very thick it will be so thick that it will look like a plug of cotton and that plug of cotton will seal the surface so that because here we have vagina here we have here we have vagina so this vagina uh, through vagina many things can enter but we don't want the things to enter inside this body portion because here the baby is present okay so the whenever you have very a female have very higher amount of progesterone the mucus will be thick and you can see a thickest mucus during pregnancy okay now 
this wall of uterus has three layers. The outermost layer is known as perimetrium. This is very important. Every year the question is asked from here. The inner muscular layer known as myometrium and the most innermost layer known as endometrium. Okay, so there are three layers. Let me tell you one more time. The outermost layer is perimetrium which is made up of epithelium. It is technically like pleura of lungs, cirrhosa of your gut, right? It's just like that. It's outermost layer. And then we have the middle layer of myometrium. Myo means muscle. It is made up of smooth muscles. And these smooth muscles are very much important for delivery of the baby because when these will contract, the baby will move down, okay? And the innermost layer is known as endometrium. Endometrium consists of tissue and glands. And this is the particular layer that falls off during menstruation. Whenever female have menses, she bleeds. So what does she bleed? She bleeds this endometrium layer. It is present all over, right? She bleeds this endometrium layer every month during her menses and that contains blood vessels and tissues. So one common question that can be asked is which layer falls off or slows off during menstruation? That's endometrium. Which layer helps in delivery of the baby? Myometrium, which is the outermost protective layer, perimetrium. They can also ask you the question on the sequence uh, from outside to inside. First we have perimetrium, then we have myometrium and then we have endometrium. That's the important thing to remember. Okay guys, so another thing that I have told you about cervix, let me write it here. Higher progesterone, if the female have higher progesterone, then mucus will be thick. And during pregnancy, it forms cervical plug. Cervical plug is made up of thick mucus. Okay, now what about vagina? Let's talk about vagina now. Okay, so vagina is a copulatory canal. What is copulatory canal? Copulation means sexual intercourse. Copulation means sexual intercourse. So during sexual intercourse, the penis enters inside the vagina. So that's why you call it as a copulatory canal. It is made up of a lot of or it contains a lot of muscles and fiber. So you call it as fibromuscular organ. But it does not contain any gland. Just like uh, uh, cervix had glands, it does not contain any gland. So whatever secretion comes out of vagina, that is basically the secretion of cervix, not the vagina, okay? So glands are absent. Glands are absent. Another thing, it has folds inside. For example, if this is vagina, the vagina will be having folds like this in the wall. There will be folds like these in the wall and the folds are known as rugae. Rugae are present. What are these rugae? These are folds. So vagina is known as a copulatory canal because baby comes out, if you'll see if baby is present here, baby comes out through cervix and vagina to the outside. So vagina and cervix together they are known as birth canal. So if someone is asking what is a copulatory canal, what will you say? You will say vagina. But if someone you ask, if someone is asking you what is a birth canal or what structures? Okay, let me write it here. What structure forms birth canal? Then you will say that is vagina plus cervix or cervical canal that forms birth canal. That's quite important. Do not forget it. Okay, so that's about the uterus and vagina and the entire duct system. Let's read the NCRT of this. First, the female reproductive system consists of a pair of ovaries along with oviduct, uterus, cervix, vagina and external genitalia located in which region? Pelvic region, also known as pelvis. Okay. 
These parts of the system along with the pair of mammary glands are integrated structurally and functionally to support the process of ovulation, fertilization, pregnancy, birth and child care. This is the function of female reproductive system. That's why nature has given so that a female can make egg ovulation. So that that egg will fuse with sperm fertilization. After fusion, the baby pregnancy should start and then baby will come out and female can take care of the baby with the help of mammary gland because she will be producing milk which will feed the young ones. Okay. Now, ovaries are the primary female sex organ that produce a female gametovum and several steroid hormones ovarian hormones steroid is a kind of a lipid so we'll be talking about it in the later sections right the ovary ovaries are located one on each side of the lower abdomen each ovary is about two to four centimeter in length and is connected to the pelvic wall and uterus via ligament so what's the dimension two to four centimeter because you have to learn it from ncrt only so just pay attention on these each ovary is covered by a thin epithelium which encloses the ovarian stroma the stroma is divided into peripheral peripheral means outer periphery outer okay so peripheral is another name for outer and inner medullary region okay so that's about ovary guys let's talk about duct the ovary duct uterus and vagina constitutes the female accessory ducts each fallopian tube is around 10 to 12 centimeter long again i always suggest to learn dimensions from ncrt and extend from the periphery of each ovary to the uterus so it's extend it starts from ovary and move up to uterus the part closer to the ovary is funnel shaped infundibulum edges of the infundibulum possesses finger like projection known as fimbrae which help in collection of ova after ovulation so this is what we have I have told you, you all have arms, right? You can relate. So these finger like will help in collection of ovum. And the infundibulum lead to a wider part of the oviduct known as ampulla. The last part of the oviduct is isthmus which has a narrow lumen and it joins to the uterus. Narrow lumen means it's very narrow. Just like your shoulder is narrow. Okay. All right. Next, uterus. Uterus is single and it is also called womb. You all know that. The shape of the uterus is like inverted pear. It is supported by ligaments attached to the pelvic wall. So just like ovaries, I have told you, ovaries are attached to the uterus only. Right? They are also attached to the uterus. So definitely uterus will be having ligaments also. Okay? The uterus opens into vagina through a narrow cervix. The cavity of the cervix is known as cervical canal, which along with vagina forms the birth canal. The wall of the uterus has three layers. The external thin membrane is perimetrium, middle thick layer of smooth muscle myometrium and inner glandular endometrium that lines the uterine cavity. So lines the uterine cavity means inside of the uterine cavity. The endometrium undergoes cyclical changes during menstrual cycle while the myometrium exhibits strong contraction during delivery of the baby. That's what we have done, right? So which muscle helps in the contraction for the delivery of baby? Myometrium, which falls off endometrium. Okay. All right. So let's do some questions, guys. All right. So first question is given below is diagrammatic section view of the female reproductive system. Identify the part label A, B, C, D, E. Mention the function of DNA, what is WOMP? So it's a kind of a question for your practice, for your school, for boards, okay? So I will also try to bring some question where you can practice about boards and I'll let you know how to write them. So that's a promise, okay? All right, so let's get started. First of all, they have asked to identify. A is in fundibulum. B, B is your ampulla. C is isthmus right what is dna e is endometrium and this is myometrium so now they have also asked you about mention the function of dna what's the function of myometrium it has smooth muscle so muscle will contract so muscle contraction will help in delivery of baby so if this is for example you are in your writing exam well, how will you write so first of all always start writing like uh, a b c d you have uh, like you are writing the question how will you write it first of all you will write a you will write answer and you will write a 
So in A1, you have to mention A is this, B is this, C is this, D is this, E is this. Okay. On B, now how you will start? You will write first of all D, you will mention it is a myometrium. And now you will write myometrium is the middle layer of uh, your uterus and myometrium contains smooth muscle and these muscles helps in the, uh, these muscle will contract and lead to the delivery of the baby. This is how you write. Now you will write about E. E was, E was your endometrium, right? And now you will write about E that this is endometrium. Let me write here only. This is endometrium and endometrium undergoes cyclical changes during menstruation. So you will write the complete one. Now we will go to the C. What is a womb? So you will write womb is the another name of another name for uterus. So we will not just leave it here because maybe the teacher is not satisfied. So you will also write one more line that uterus is a, a part of a duct system where um, you know gestation takes place. You can write one of a function that will justify more and that will give you definitely one marks if it contains one marks only. Okay. So this is how you have to write the answers. Now let's talk about MCQ. The wall of the uterus has three layers of tissues. The layer which undergoes cyclical changes during menstruation is very simple endometrium. Answer is three. Next, which of the following is an incorrect match? Myometrium. Exhibit strong contraction during delivery of baby, true. Endometrium, undergo cyclical changes during menstruation, true. Perimetrium is the cirrhosis of uterus. I have told you perimetrium is just like cirrhosis of your gut. And uterus is not the birth canal. Birth canal is formed by cervix and vagina. So answer is 4 because we have to find the incorrect match. Next, hysterectomy is the surgical removal of the so it's very simple, hystera, what is hystera? Womb, uterus. So ectomy is surgical remover. Whenever ectomic word is used, ectomy, that means you are removing it surgically. So in some cases when female have certain disorders like cancer and so of uterus, they are asked to remove it, okay. So doctor will remove it and that process is known as or procedure is known as hysterectomy. So that's for uterus, answer two. Next. The figure given below depicts a diagrammatic sectional view of female reproductive system of human which one set of three parts out of one to six have been correctly identified. First of all, always write the parts then move to the question. First is your endometrium, second is your myometrium, fifth is your cervix, right and your the sixth is vagina, fourth is your fimbrae. And third is infundibulum. Let's do it. So it is saying first is perimetrium. This is wrong. Second is myometrium. True. And third it is saying fallopian tube. In some way it is true. But this one is wrong. Second it is saying endometrium. No, it's myometrium. So it's wrong. In third option it is saying third is infundibulum. Which is true. Fourth is fimbrae, Which is true. And fifth is cervix. This is absolutely correct. In fourth option it is saying fourth is ovidusal funnel. Then fifth is uterus and sixth is cervix. Okay, so why this is wrong? The fourth is not funnel. Oviducal funnel means they are talking about infundibulum. But no, but the fourth one is fimbri. Okay, so answer to this question guys, it will be third. So that's it about female reproductive system and I hope you will practice the questions and I'll ask you in the next class also and we'll talk about mammary glands and vulva. So keep on studying, keep on working really, really very hard and uh, make things simple, learn things up, you know, um, you know, follow more on the diagrammatic portion and everything will be fine in this chapter. So I'll meet you in the next class. Till then, bye-bye. Take care.